Continuing from our previous discussion, we delve into a common misconception, the belief that women are naturally monogamous. This view, often propagated by male conservatives, paints women as wanting only good husbands, while men follow their heartless instincts. A 1994 survey seemed to support this, showing men desired six sexual partners in the next year, whereas women ideally wanted just one. But does this truly prove women are naturally monogamous? Not quite. Women are aware of their own complex sexual urges, traditionally choosing to remain silent about them. A husband's peace of mind often rests on the belief that his wife is naturally monogamous. Moreover, it's not necessarily in a woman's best interest for her husband to understand her too well. Knowledge, after all, is power. So, the belief of women's natural monogamy is more of a noble lie, beneficial, but false. A more accurate term to describe feminine sexual desire is hypergamy. This term refers to the instinctive behavior of partnering with the best possible mate. It's not about quantity, but quality. Picture a pack of baboons in the wild. The females compete for the chance to mate with the alpha, the top-notch male. The males, on the other hand, compete to climb the social ladder to become the alpha. This echoes the human dynamic. Men may seek variety, but women? They're content with the best. This instinct shapes a woman's sexual utopia, a two-part dream. Firstly, she unites with her ideal man, her dream partner. Secondly, this man commits to her and only her. It's a fantasy spun by countless romance novels. However, it remains a utopia because, let's face it, no perfect man exists. And even if he did, he can't be the exclusive mate of every woman who desires him. The female sexual utopia, though impossible, is a result of their hypergamous instincts. Let's consider a scenario where women's hypergamous desires are fully realized. Imagine a world where women, not men, hold the reins of power, dictating the very laws of attraction and mating. This is not a mere flight of fancy, but a plot from the Ecclesiastesi of Aristophanes. In this tale, the women of Athens seize control, barricading their husbands from the legislative assembly. They then enact a law that compels the most attractive males to mate with each female in turn, beginning with the least attractive. This is the manifestation of the female sexual utopia, a world where women's instinct for hypergamy is not just accepted, but enforced. A world where the best man is not one man's prize, but a shared treasure. Aristophanes understood the female mind better than most, showcasing the power of the female sexual utopia. This, in essence, is the ultimate female power fantasy, a hypergamous utopia. Having explored the female sexual utopia, we now find ourselves at a crossroads. We've delved into the realms of monogamy, hypergamy, and even an utopia dictated by feminine sexual desire. It's a fascinating journey, one that leaves us with more questions than answers. Is such a utopia even feasible? Or is it just a dream, an idealized vision of a world that could never truly exist? And if it did exist, would it truly be a utopia? or would it lead to a dystopia of its own kind? These are not mere philosophical ponderings, but real questions that challenge our understanding of human nature and societal norms. In our next video, we will delve deeper into these questions and the concept of hypergamy and the female sexual utopia. But for now, we want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on these concepts? Do you agree or disagree? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And before we close, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more such enlightening discussions. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring.